Yo, what's going on guys? Blue here coming at you with another PGA 2K21 video. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk most of the time. There is gonna, not going to be much gameplay unless I really want to show you something. Um, and there's a lot of questions that can ask, get asked in streams that I'm in. And um, I figured, why not make a video about some of the things the best players in this game do. And I surveyed a bunch of them. Um, and I took... From lowest to highest, um, obviously some didn't make the list, uh, but I took the five that, that received the most consistent answers, uh, and I'm putting them up here so that maybe um, for those of you that are just like playing amateur and you want to become a little bit more competitive, for those of you that are on the cusp of being like really competitive and you want to get to that next level, um, I'm sure there's at least one of these five, if not all five, um, that you're not doing on a consistent basis and be... Be truthful to yourself. You're probably not doing it on a consistent basis. Um, so without further ado, let's get started on the list. Starting with number one. Time, routine, consuming tutorials, practice. Putting time in the game. Some of the best players in this world have 1,500 to 2,000 hours put in this game since its release in September. And some have even more. So the more time you play... It's no secret the better you're going to be at the game. Um, but it's not just enough to, to put time in because obviously if you're practicing the wrong things, then you're never actually going to get better, right? So consume tutorials. There's a lot on my page. There's a lot on several other YouTube pages. Um, practice some of the things you see on those tutorials. Find the tutorials that suit you. Not, not everybody's methods are good for every player. There's different players. There's different swing types. Um, there's, there's different tempo players. There's all of that. So find the ones that suit you. Find something that's, that's comfortable with you. And then get into that routine. Before you start your rounds, maybe come to the range. Take a few practice shots. Um, you know, practice a specific shot you always have a hard time with. Maybe it's, you know, going into a practice round and focusing on one particular thing. That day, if you've been struggling on your pitch shots in, anything from 50, 50 yards, 60 yards in, then really hyper-focus on those things during your practice rounds and, and build upon those building blocks. Um, the only way you're going to get better, it's the only way you're going to become competitive at the game. Um, and it's, it's an answer that came about time and time again, um, but didn't receive the most answers. But it is one that was very consistent across the board. Um, with only uh, with only a handful of, of the players that didn't mark this as one of the things that they did that they thought they did that was different than anybody else. So put in the time, consume those tutorials, find yourself a routine, and practice, practice, practice. Number two, the short game and the scrambling. This one was interesting because it, it it came up quite often um, in different variations and different um, ways of of putting it. So. Um, a lot of people were talking about how the short game is the number one thing that allows them to score, and I'm I'm going to agree with them. You're not always going to hit the green. You're not always going to hit the the fairway. Um, you're not always going to have the perfect lie or the perfect shot. So understanding your short game, understanding what a flop does, understanding what a splash does for you, understanding if a pitch shot is the right moment to be taking it. Um, Scrambling to get that 100% scramble and, and saving pars or even making birdies out of situations that make no sense are definitely in the top of my personal list and obviously in the top of some of the best players in the world's list um, as to what is going to make you um, score way better or gain those strokes on the field versus what the amateur players are doing out there or the slightly less competitive players. Um, practice your pitch shots, practice your, your, your splash shots, understand what the uphill lies and the downhill lies do to them, um, understand what the rollouts are for your chips, your pitches, your, your, your splashes, understand what's going to happen when you put a backspin on it, understand all of that, will the wind affect it, will it not affect it, um, where do you actually want to land the ball on the green and is there break there, you're actually looking at the break when you're doing your chips, pitching, splashing and, and, um, and flopping. So make sure you're paying extra extra care, extra attention, because that little 50-yard shot can cost you the same as a 300-yard drive, right? So um, scrambling, short game, 
very, very important. Make sure you understand your clubs and make sure you're ready for any particular scenario in and around the greens. Number three, improvisation, shot types, using overpowered shots, partial, closing gaps on shots. So this one, I kind of like, I kind of clustered a whole bunch of information that came at me from a lot of these players. Um, and I tried to give you guys kind of a little bit of everything. And I'll, I'll go through each one to see what they mean. So improv, what we mean by improv is the, is the ability to improvise when things don't go your way. Um, you can practice all day. You can write notes. What's going to happen is you're going to eventually miss a tempo. You're going to miss a green. You're going to end up behind a tree. You're going to end up in pine bark where, you, where, where, where nobody knows what's going to happen with the ball. Um, you're going to end up on a slope that's red um, and angled. The ability for you to improvise, which just means practicing all types of shots, not just the easy ones, um, is going to be huge for you. Understanding all the shot types, pitching, splashing, uh, flopping, um, full shots, and then partial shots. And, and, and uh, w is it better to take a pitch shot or is it better to take the 88-yard club? Is it better to take my 88-yard club like this? And then, and then partial it down to like 75, or is it better to grab a 78-yard pitch shot? And there's different, there's different consequences to that, right? But for you to be able to, to step up and, and hit this 88-yard uh, shot, you know, at that, at that partial and get your ball, you know, closer than, than you could have gotten with the pitch or without having to do any kind of, any kind of manipulation to the draws and all that, then that's... Um, that's insane. The overpowered. So the overpowered, what we mean by that is being able to, let's say I wanted to close a gap that was, you know, here. So three iron to 243. I want to I want to hit this three iron, um, you know, with the wind. I want to hit it like 220, 225. So you're going to, you're going to, you're going to back and hold and then, you know, get that 102. I didn't hit my tempo there, but you're going to get that 102. You're going to get that overpowered. So being able to close the gap. With an overpowered shot like that, 102, hitting the fast. Now I should get a little, well, I got the wind in the face on this one here. But we're going to get more than what we would have gotten had we not done that. So being able to close the gaps and using overpowered shots and and understanding what they're going to do to your clubs and, and, and the ball um, is really, 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 really powerful to close the gaps on some of your longer shots um, and be able to stick the ball even that much closer to the, to the hole. The, the, the greatest players in the games are great putters, but trust me, their proximity to hole is even better. And this, num this, this, this point right here is what's taking it to the next level for them. They can do anything they want with the ball at any particular time. Number four, consistent tempo. It doesn't matter what you choose to do. If you want to step up and fast the ball or perfect the ball like that, um, make sure that you're perfecting the ball Every single time, if I step up now and my next shot is like this and it's a very fast and I aim for the perfect, I'm going to be way off from where I want it to be. So make sure that every time you step up to the uh, to the ball, you're able to hit a consistent tempo. I choose to play the perfect. Um, if you choose to play the fast, great. Know how to play both shots and have it in your arsenal. You know, have it in your arsenal. Just a slight slow miss there. Um, if you want to play the fast because you got to get the extra distance, know how to play the fast. If I want to play my fast, I just flick the stick, I get my fast just red fast. So know how you play your fast, know how to get those extra distance, but be very consistent on your tempo. What that's going to allow you to do is aim in the proper location. Because if you know, if you never know if you're going to be fast, slow, or, or perfect, you're never going to know if you should aim it right here because I'm going to hit it perfect every single time or be right here because I want to I want to fast it in or I tend to slow and I go here. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're an always slow hitter, then that's fine. Embrace it. Hit the slow. Or I hit the fast, actually. So hit the slow and, and embrace that shot, but aim accordingly and consistently play the slow, right? There's nothing... I can't even play this slow. I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing perfects. But there's nothing wrong with with having that consistent tempo for myself. If I want to put it on the banner, all right, dude. <laughs> so anyway, have a consistent tempo. I don't know what to tell you, man. It's late here. There we go. So fast. If you're playing the fast, just step up and hit it fast the same way every single time. I swear to God, I'm gonna do it this time. Watch. There it is. Another fast. So now I know where my ball is gonna land. Um, and I'm going to be able to aim more uh, more appropriately 
and never um, never really falter. And there's the perfect right down the middle. So if I want to be down the middle, I aim it. See, notice how I came way left from where the fastest. If I wanted to hit fast and I was doing what I was doing before and not getting that consistent tempo, my ball is 10, 15, 20 yards away from where I actually want it to be. And I'm not giving myself an optimal chance um, to, to hit the ball. And the number five or the most... Um, most repetitive point that these players gave me was knowing your clubs, being in the range with pro vision and shot shaping, understanding all of that. Um, it doesn't matter which club set you guys have. The pros know that this 215, when hit perfect, is going to land on a fairway and roll out 10 yards, 8 yards, no matter what your, your, your particular club is. There landed at 199. It should roll out to about. We have a little bit of wind in the face, so probably a little less, but it'll roll out 8, 10, 15 yards, whatever it is. You know, the three wood from landing point is going to land and roll out 15 yards. You know, with the wind in our face, we'll see what it gives, but knowing what the wind in the face, the 34, 244. So the wind is really holding us back, so it, it only got 10 yards out of it. Knowing that, understanding that. These guys have spreadsheets, guys. They'll 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 sit here, and if you want to know what I mean by ProVision, what you do is you go to settings, and you go into difficulty, and you turn on this ProVision here. Uh, ProVision for lie penalty. Well, actually, what they do is they do true shot. So ProVision for true shot, and uh, ProVision for wind. I don't think they do lie angle, lie penalty, elevation, all that. They probably don't. Um, so that when you go to do your shot, your shot's looking like this. So now, if I wanted to manipulate, you'll see here, it's actually telling me. So they'll come here and they'll be like, okay, on a three wood, what happens when I deal off my three wood slightly? Oh, I'm losing. I actually lose. I actually lose immediately. The second I start to deloft a driver, I lose. What happens when I deloft an iron? The second I start to deloft... Oh, what the hell? There's a moment in time where you actually gain yardage on a delofted line uh, iron. Look at that. So if I deloft almost all the way, I go from hitting a 147.6 iron, I can get it to go 155 when I hit it. <clears throat> I'm cutting out the wind now, but there is wind in the face, but 155, there it is. So you can actually gain distance with your irons when you're doing deloffs. The power of that and the power of understanding, well, how does shot shaping work in the game? Well, what does shot shaping do? So shot shaping kind of lands right there, right? If you hit it perfect, it comes right back to the point of where you aim it pretty much. How many yards? How many yards did that take off? With the wind, it's hard to tell. If you haven't made your own practice range, I suggest you do it. Take away the the wind. But this driver should be going 263 right now, or 273. That's the effect of the wind. The wind is actually taking my driver off. So if it go, if it's supposed to go, the the more I the more I draw the ball, the more I'm losing distance. So I can actually use the driver with a full with a full draw to take off 20 yards on it. If I hit it perfectly, it's going to hit right in the middle, give or take. In that 250 range, now I've actually, instead of partialing a driver, I could just utilize that knowledge to say, okay, if I have a hole where I can drive, but I only need to drive it 270, what do I need to do? I need to draw it halfway. If I draw it halfway, I'm going to get my 270 out of this. A little red, red fast, so it should be a little bit less. 267 because I got the red fast on the drives. Um, so charting that out even if you want to have it on an Excel sheet, but going into your own custom made range. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go back and see that video. Super, super, super important. This point here, every single one of them, with the exception of one, every single one of them that I surveyed came up with this answer. Knowing my clubs, understanding the shot shaping, hitting the range, figuring out the distances of every shot, figuring out 
how the shot shaping is going to affect every shot and uh, using provision either in practice rounds or in the range in order to achieve like you know what what the distances are and they'll actually write that down a lot of them keep a separate spreadsheet to um, to figure that out so there you have it guys the five things that the pro players the best players in this game are doing every single time they go out there and I promise you it's uh, there's at least one thing on this list that you guys aren't doing be truthful with yourself what I suggest you do pick one at a time and work on it figure out how to do it um, Go see some of these guys uh, like the Sloners of the world, Lextrons of the world, um, Gamer Abilities of the world, Lit J. Foxen of the world. Uh, I don't want to forget anybody. Hemos of the world. Um, any player that is playing competitive on Twitch or on YouTube um, that advertises as playing in the TGC Platinum Tour, these are the kind of guys you want to watch. Um, a Steaming Polak's another one. So... I hope you find these points informative. I hope that if you're watching this video, um, it's something that you actually want to take seriously and do. If you're not interested in being hard, this hardcore at the game, that's fine. This video wasn't for you. Um, but if you are interested in being this hardcore at the game, make sure these five points are being put into use every single time you go out and play. I promise you some videos on some of this stuff. Um, especially... The knowing your clubs range provision. I will make a separate video on point number five on how to achieve that. I showed you a little bit here, but I will make a video on how to achieve that in your own custom range. So what I suggest you do first is go back, watch the own custom range video, make that range, and then you and I can go inside that range and look at it together as to what the what the charting of a club looks like um, and what these guys have done in order to have all that information at their fingertips. Um, that's it, guys. So I hope you find this video informative. I hope some of these points work for you. I hope you actually take the time to try them, practice, and we'll see you out on the course. Until next time, I'm Blue. Peace.